We now come to our last speaker, it's Florian Hoffmann. He's the co-founder of the Do School. Do School does not only exist in Berlin, but uh, lucky we have it here in Berlin too. He's working there as well as in the offices of the Do School in New York, in Hong Kong. Sometimes he's at Prenzlauer back with his little daughter. What, is it, what does he do? It's a, um, it's a purposeful doer uh, community that uh, works in partnerships with major institutions and corporations, IKEA, not to name only, H&M, Deutsche Bahn, Covestro, Unilever, Axel Springer, the Hong Kong Jockey Club, the U United Nations Environmental Program, and many others. He has been one of the 100 disting distinguished young global leaders under 40 by the World Economic Forum in 2017. Now we are very happy to have you here. Florian. Hi guys, great to be here. So uh, now I know how Joanna feels. With you, everything is, was true about all the amazing stuff that you've done. With me, it's really a little oversold, but fair enough. Um, great to be with you. The reason why I'm here is, you know, the SDGs are a great beacon, but at the same time, they're also really broad. And what I want to use my seven minutes on with you is to sort of maybe inspire you a little bit about what is it that you specifically yourself as startup entrepreneurs, as people who work in organizations, as people who have responsibility for organizations, what you can do with regards to your impact and how you think about what you want to do with your time in the world. Yeah? So as you've heard already, Thomas gave a really sort of succinct uh, uh, sort of story of all the different stories that are there and maybe missing and how messy it is. I think one that is very sort of easy to argue is What's really different today than from 100 years ago is that we live in a world in which doing is much more democratized than it has ever been. You know, 100 years ago, there was a relatively small group of people who had a lot of power. There's still people in our world who have a lot of power, but a lot more people all around the world have the ability to really impact many other people's lives. No matter whether your boat is rocked by the SDGs or by Me Too, or if you're a Yellow West in Paris or somewhere else, you can actually influence the way of the world much more than you could have ever before. No matter what philosophy you're supporting. But at the same time, we heard that our world is messy, right? Sort of, you can tell a story that we're going down and there's ecological collapse. You can also tell the story that we're actually getting better and, you know, sort of infant mortality and all the rest of it. So how do we make sense of this, especially when we spend a day on such a nice word as sustainable innovation, right, where it's about the new and about creating new solutions to important problems, right? It, hap it depends a lot on how we think about the world with regards to what it is that we actually do. So my answer is that I believe that if you want to create success for yourself as an entrepreneur, as an employee, as no matter what it is that you do, as well as society, there's a lot that you can take from this idea of doing things purposefully. Now, the only problem is what the hell does that mean? Yeah? And I spent the last five years with the Do School um, with entrepreneurs, with intrapreneurs with senior leaders from over 100 countries, around 50,000 people. And what I want to do very quickly is I want to give you four traits that I believe sort of show purposeful doing and that can be appropriated by everybody. And I hope that they can be an inspiration to some of you. So the first one is people tend to be more effective if they're able to understand themselves. Joanna spoke a bit about the inner work and then relate their passion to a purpose, right? So people who are able to say, why am I doing what am I doing? And this is not only something that relates to individuals. Research also shows that it's helpful for companies, for governments, for nonprofits. If they're really able to say, why am, are we here? What are we here for? It's good for their customers or their beneficiaries. It's good for reaching out and understanding the world and staying connected to whom they want to serve. A second feature is that you see people are sort of impactful or people that are impactful very often are able to react quickly. 
But I don't know how often you've been in a room where people said, we really should do something about this. Oh my God, we really should do something about this. Yeah. But very often people sort of sit there and nothing happens. Inertia kicks in. And inertia kicks in either because the pressure isn't hard enough or because the problem, just the scale, seems too big. Right? If you're now going for any one of the SDGs, zero hunger, and you say, oh shit, how am I going to contribute to zero hunger? It's quite a big one. Right? Purposeful doers are people who nevertheless actually create the energy who get going despite knowing that the problem is probably too big for them to solve it by themselves. Yeah? It's a second trait that I want to share. A third one is that when we talk about purposeful doing, what we really mean is people or organizations that are able to implement well and quickly. Right? And again, if you've worked in large organizations, for example, you will have undoubtedly had the experience of somebody spending a lot of time on understanding a problem and building a theory, right? Business school students, cases, let's build a case, yeah? But actually, to then take action, to make it happen, to go out there, make the mistakes, get involved, get involved. People who get involved effectively are purposeful doers. And last but not least, and I think it's one of the most important ones, purposeful doers have an ability to actually engage productively with diversity, right? And whereas we believe often that our world is becoming smaller because we know everything all the time with our little devices about what the world is like, the reality is obviously that our viewpoints become often smaller and smaller because they become more personalized. So the ability to talk to people that you horridly disagree with, that have a very different viewpoint, and the ability to bring them in to work collaboratively on stuff that you're passionate about is something that increases the ability to come up with good solutions, build broader coalitions, and help you as somebody who wants to do a project, a startup, work in a big company, or drive a big organization to succeed. Those are some of the traits that I see in amazing people all around the world who are getting stuff done. No matter where they come from, what skin color they have, or what their educational background is. I think we can learn from them. And if you want to talk to me about some of these traits, feel free. Yeah, thank you. Florian, thank you. You don't want to share many questions in, these last, in this, this last hour, but I go for yours, if there's none for the moment. You work with leaders, 50K people around the world, I read that. How do you bring sustainability more to the core of their being and doing? How do you do it? I think one answer is to try not to work with sustainability departments, but to really look at what is actually the future of the organization. Right? And when you think about, um, I think, when you look at most big industries or most big organizations and companies that are looking at their products, the point is not that they want to actually sort of stick to stuff that is unsustainable or that is not environmentally friendly. Uh, but the question is, if you have a leadership, and that's a prerequisite that actually wants to change things, how do you deal with the scale of a big organization and try to actually innovate? How do and you do I it? Do you, or do you often start, if you have the go from the leadership department, yeah. let's say, then do you often advise to say, let's start here with a small team and a small idea and let's scale from there? Yeah. Or do you at the same time try to really basically change some things profoundly, sustainably? Yeah, it's a great question. I think it, the, sort of the answer is you need to do two things at the same time. You need to work on actual innovation products and services. And for this, I strongly believe you need to actually develop uh, sort, of the, the, uh, sort of the methodology of co-creating with very different actors, stakeholders, mm. we often call it in that world, mm. from the outside, from the inside, who actually bring particular knowledge around some of the problems. Because often sort of the know-how within large organizations, no matter whether they're governments or foundations or companies, are not really fully utilized because you always bring the same people around the room. 
in order to solve a problem. So you bring diverse viewpoints, you try to solve problems differently. At the same time, as you solve problems differently, you need to empower people to actually think about purpose within an organization mm -hmm. and to take action. And that is quite scary. It takes mm -hmm. a lot of courage. Mm -hmm. And you need to support people who have that courage and to take that courage to drive change forward. And Thomas said we missed the stories. Mm -hmm. uh, in his talk. Do you think uh, it's an important task for uh, advisors as you are to help people create their own storytelling in co-creation mode for their purpose? Is that a big task, talking leadership? Yeah, yeah absolutely. And I think, you know, in, in my experience, sort of answering the why, why are we here, is not necessarily the predominant questions that leaders are concerned with. Right, they're concerned with how do I solve today's KPIs. problems. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you know, how do I solve the what? Or all the normally all the bad things come up, right? Yeah. So actually, being um, very sort of visibly the driver of answering the question of why are we here, what are we doing, and then inviting everybody within the organization, everybody within an, a university, to try to answer that question for themselves as well, is one I think of of the big impetus that leaders can, can take. Two last quick question from me. What is your why, the real why? Your real why behind <coughs> everything you do? Um, my real why is that I, I believe that we have to change the system from within and not the outside. I'm, I'm not mm -hmm. a revolutionary in that sense. And I believe that one of the things that are really a, a problem for why change isn't happened quickly enough is that diverse people are not talking enough and not working enough collaboratively together. Yeah, so and if I can have a platform that supports that cross-fertilization, then that's why I'm here. You, do you work, we, I come back to the refugees, uh, because Andreas mentioned it in the, in the very morning. Um, do you try to bring companies more to bring refugees or people with refugee background in their contexts? Yeah, we've done uh, refugee programs, I think the first one, three or four years ago, we, we run different kinds of refugee programs, but where it's not about sort of doing something for refugees, but where it's about there's problems that need to be solved with and for refugees, and they're equal partners. Mm -hmm. right, the point is about the difference is not negative, it's not about bringing women on boards, or it's not about sort of bringing employees into board decisions, or it's not about bringing outsiders into product developments. It's about the understanding mm -hmm. that diverse viewpoints will actually lead to better outcomes. Mm -hmm. last, very last question, your biggest learning or your biggest learning curve over the last years? that it's a process. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you for that. Thank you very much.